Well, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, right there where you are. Make a joyful noise for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes, His name is Jesus. You know what, on behalf of Pastor Andre and Pastor Jenny, all the way from the United States of America, it is a very good morning to you. Welcome to Faith Worship as we come to you live from Studio B in the Faith Dome from beautiful East London, South Africa. Chantel, what a beautiful day, what a glorious day. And even already before the service, the presence of the Lord is so strong. The presence of God is in this place. And you know what? Today, I know you have been tuning in, participating faithfully week in and week out. But for today, a new day with new mercies, our heart's desire is truly that you will encounter God face to face, that you will incline your ear to Him. And I've realized that in this time where there is so much need, we need Him for maybe a physical breakthrough to heal us, to bring through um, uh, in, in our finances to come through for us. We need God more than ever. And there might be people who jump on the bandwagon to say, I know there's a Jesus and I know He can do something for me. But I pray that we will not be looking for God for His hand, that you will experience His heart this morning, that we will, we will love and honor God because of His Lordship and nothing else. And to say in Matthew 6, 33, it says that seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then every single thing that you might have need of, even the things that you don't even know that you need yet, they will be added unto you because He's a good Father. But it all starts with that relationship. And I know that's what Pastor Kevin is going to be talking about this morning. Amen. Absolutely. You know what? Covenant flows by virtue of relationship. And that's what we're going to get into today. So right now, right there where you are, quickly go to the MyFaith.TV Facebook page. Even if you're joining us right now on DSTV, on the Sky Network, or any one of the networks all around the United States of America, quickly go to the MyFaith.TV Facebook page. Then click on today's broadcast. You will see it. It is live right now. Click on that broadcast, click that share button, and then also right after you've shared it, I want you to tag 10, 20 people today. I want some people, come on, where are our Facebook ambassadors at? Those people who say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So quickly click on that share button, tag 10 friends, 20 friends, tell the whole world that Jesus is alive. For today, the power of God will go forth, the anointing of God will be released, and we're going to participate in the glory of God. I am anticipating that we're going to see the power of God manifest in this place in your homes and all around the world through the airwaves today. So have an expectation. Quickly go onto the MyFaith.TV Facebook page, the comment section. Also let us know where you are participating from. I also want you to say what it is that you are expecting from today. I'm also once again wanting to see the flags of the different countries as we're going to go to the Word of the Lord and we're going to decree the blessing of God over the cities, the towns, and the nations that are represented this morning. So quickly go to the MyFaith.TV Facebook page. There are people already watching from Namibia, from South Africa, from Malawi, from Uganda, Nigeria, all around the continent of Africa as well as Europe, the United States, and pretty much all the other countries around the world. So we're going to go right now to a time of praise. And I want to ask that you would just move that coffee table out of the way. Because, come on, you, you, you need to say, I need some space today to praise the Lord. I'm wanting you, as you praise the Lord, to let every weight, every burden, every shackle, every chain, it doesn't matter what has happened this week. Today is the day. This morning will be the morning that those things fall off so that you can declare unto the heavenlies that I am free because of what Jesus has done in my life. So are you ready to praise the name of Jesus? Are you ready? Come on, faith band, are you ready? Are you all ready? Come on, let's praise the name of Jesus. your name. 
out of the grave. Come back to the wild and don't be afraid. Let's go. Run into wide open spaces, graces waiting for you. Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom.
God of the breakthrough. Right there in your home right now, I want you to, to declare that over your life. On this jubilant July, I tell you, it's the last day or the last week of July. But I tell you what, Jubilee is not going to end. We've, been, we've, been, we've declared this month as the month of jubilant July. And I tell you what, you are going to continue to experience the breakthrough that God has ordained for you. Regardless of the circumstances. For we serve the God of the breakthrough. Hallelujah. At home right now, if you're watching this on television, if you're watching this on DSTV channel 341, I want to encourage you to take out your mobile device right now. Go onto our Facebook page, myfaith.tv. Find the live broadcast and share the broadcast right now. Share it into every group that you know. Send it on WhatsApp and, and tag 10 friends in the comment section. You know what? Today, someone's life's going to be changed by you simply clicking the share button. 
you do something that not that anybody else cannot do here's the thing you say but i can't I, I i can't go out and share the word what you can do is you can click the share button and get the word out to as many people as you possibly can hallelujah so today the lord has impressed on my heart to speak about the covenant blessings that follow when we love have faith and obey let me say that again when we love have faith and obey mark chapter 12 verse 30 mark chapter 12 verse 30 it says this and you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength this is the first command you see, everything in the kingdom of God works on the platform of love. Everything in the kingdom of God works on the platform of love. The new covenant was initiated by God when he sent Jesus to die in our place because he loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave. See, for, I, wanna, I want you to know this. Where love is absent, faith is inoperative. For faith operates through love. Where love is absent, Faith is inoperative, for faith operates through love. See, giving is one of our proofs of the sincerity of our love for God. And here's the thing, if you love God, you will give to God, and it will be a delight. Why then is giving a sincerity for our love for God, a proof of it? Because your dependency is not on the provision. Your dependency is on your provider. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Hallelujah. And you know what? Jesus said, if you love God, we will obey all His commands. Therefore, there is always our part to play in everything concerning the kingdom of God. There's always our part to play. Never think for one second that it's just God going to do everything. We've got to do our part by obeying what's written in His Word. You see, I need you to know this. You can't pray your way to prosperity. You give your way to prosperity. You can't pray your way to prosperity. You give your way to prosperity. And here's the thing. Every provision in the kingdom of God is built on a covenant platform that directs us. Every provision. We actively engage this covenant with God by our obedience in faith. Simply put, we've got to obey what the word of God says. And as we do that, as faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, we set ourselves up for perpetual victory. Because here's the thing, when we obey what God says, God is committed to perform what is in this covenant, which is victory, health, prosperity, regardless of the circumstances that may surround you right now. I really feel this strongly. You may be at home and you say, I'm done. I just want to give up. It's not over. The best is yet to come. We serve the God of the breakthrough. Hallelujah. See, that is why it is crucially important to have a revelation of what it is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Take my one-year-old son. He's watching this right now. I love you, Judah. Judah is one year old. And I need you to bear in mind these three keys. Love, faith, and obedience. Now, I love my son, Judah, and I will do anything for him. Anything. <laughs> if you're watching this, Judah, I will do anything for you. He knows beyond a shadow of a doubt that he won't go hungry. And when he falls, he expects someone to pick him up. See, that is childlike faith. This is what Jesus said we should have. As a toddler, he is always exploring, unaware of the dangers that surround him, unaware. But if he does not obey, obey my voice of caution, he could easily hurt himself. You see, the same is true for us as believers today. God loves us so much that he established this covenant. All we have to do is believe it, receive it, remain steadfast in faith. And because we love God, this comes back to love, we obey all His commands. And that gives us access to the fullness of this covenant. See, today, as you obey God and you obey the voice of God, I want you to actively engage your faith and give in love. This is how you honor your end of the covenant ensuring no, listen, listen to this it ensures your prosperity and it maintains your prosperity it ensures your prosperity and maintains your prosperity as you obey what is written in the word of god for god is waiting on us to do that which he's called us to do by obeying what's in his word for we love him so as we get into this i want us to declare this together 
It's not over. I want you to declare this with me. I am in covenant with the Most High God. I faithfully uphold my end of the covenant and represent God's kingdom while in this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. For those of you watching on television, there's some details on the screen as to how you can give securely. For those of you on Facebook, you can scroll all the way to the top. There's a donate button there. These are secure ways to give. And then for those of you who are watching online, you can go to our myfaith.tv page and click the give button. Be a part of all that God is doing right here at the Faith Family of Networks. Because I tell you what, we are living in the greatest hour. We are going to see the rise of the church for we are God's ambassadors in this earth. And we are to represent Him well. What better way to do so by prospering in all that we do? Hallelujah. Let's honor the Lord. Father, we thank you for this opportunity today to give. We thank you, Lord God, that you are so, so faithful. Today we choose to love. We choose to honor you with our wealth. And as we do so, you honor your covenant with us. And we love you for that. We thank you for all that you're going to do. Exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we can ask or think. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Faith band, glory to God. Should be a sweet fragrance to you, Lord. With all of our hearts, we come before you. With all of our hearts, we come before you, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. That was slain for us. To receive all the honor and all the glory, worthy of all our praise, worthy of every blessing, worthy of every honor and praise. Oh, we love you, Jesus, we love you, Jesus, we love you. Just begin to love on him this morning, begin to love on him this morning. Lord, on your name we love you.
every breath, with every fiber of my being, I will adore. I will adore. You were.
worship him. Let his glory come and invade your home. Let his glory come. Right there where you are in your home, come on, begin to pray in the spirit. Let South Africa, the continent of Africa, Europe, Asia, South North America, come on, let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, let me begin it to just bubble up. Let it bubble up, let it overflow. Come on, participate in the glory of God. The glory of God, which is the very atmosphere of heaven, where there's no sickness, no disease, no lack. There is no poverty. Let the Spirit of God come and invade every home, every life, every heart, every family. Hear the voice of the Lord as He declares unto you that nothing is impossible to the one who believes. In a moment, it's like wave after wave of His glory. In a moment, I'm wanting you to get ready right there, wherever it is that you're participating from. Get ready for the Spirit of the Lord is going to come. And He is going to bring breakthrough, victory over that which has been holding you back. But in that moment, as you get ready for that wave of His glory, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, let everything go. Cast everything aside. And let my Spirit come and do the work. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, come on, let's worship Him. Hallelujah. Raise your voices. As you raise your level of expectation. For with God, nothing is impossible to the one who believes. Get ready to receive, get ready to receive. Get ready to appropriate the blessing of God. Get ready to appropriate now in the glory of God, your healing, your breakthrough, your deliverance. Get ready to receive, get ready to receive. Get ready. Yes, there it is, there it is, there it is. Let the glory of God come over your life. Let the glory of God come. Right there where you are in your homes, lift up your hands all across the airwaves right now. Get ready to receive. 
Just say, Father, I receive now my miracle. I receive my blessing. I receive healing over my body. It makes no difference what it is that you are facing. Receive the miracle power of God coming upon you, upon your children and your children's children. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Come on, get ready to receive even now a fresh touch, a fresh touch of the blessing of God, the fire of God. Get ready to receive it now in Jesus' name. Receive it in. Yes, there it is. There it is. Receive the fire of God. Fire right now in the name of Jesus. Receive the fire of God. Thank you, Jesus. We receive. We receive the fullness, the full measure of your covenant promises. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Right there where you are, will you just begin to thank Him? That is the right way in which we respond to when God comes and when He touches you, when He releases unto you exactly what it is that you need. Just right there where you are, just say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would now open up your word to us. Let us see Jesus. Let us hear your voice as you declare your word. Lord, I thank you that your word is powerful, that it is quick, and that it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Speak to us now. Set the captives free, that we will be free indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. For those of you watching, I want you to go to Facebook right now, to the MyFaith.tv Facebook page. You might be on Facebook already. I want you in the comment section below just to let us know what has been happening in your home. Let us know what you have been experiencing over this time, during this time of worship. If you're only joining us now, I want you also then to click on the share button. Even if you're watching by way of television, quickly go to the MyFaith.tv Facebook page. You will find the broadcast live right now. Click on that link. Click on that video. And I want you to share this feed. Share it and then tag 10, 20 people. Those 10, 20 people that even now the Spirit of the Lord is showing you exactly who those individuals are that need to hear the Word of the Lord this day. This morning I want to share a word from the Lord dealing with faith on the one hand but also covenant on the other. We all know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But what I've discovered in looking at the Israelites as they left Egypt traveling through the wilderness, and God who reaffirmed His covenant with His people, in essence was saying to them, and what was happening is that faith came as a result of hearing the covenant of God. So following the Exodus, God spoke through His servant Moses, and God reaffirmed His covenant with His people in Sinai. His covenant involved a number of promises. But they also, as His people, had various responsibilities. In the Bible, God makes many promises. But man still has to do the work. You will remember that when God spoke to Noah, He promised that He would keep Noah and his family. But He also went so much further to say to Noah, to instruct Noah that he was to build an ark. You see, God wasn't just going to sustain him by supernatural means. In other words, just sort of taking him away and then reintroducing him to the earth after everything had taken place. God says to him, yes, I will keep you. Yes, I will keep you safe. Yes, you are the one to whom I promise that you will again through your family populate the earth. 
But God then says to him, build an ark. In other words, it's not so much about the promises of God, but also the fact that there are responsibilities that we have. God is gracious thereby, but it is also up to us to be obedient. I define obedience as to being us putting our faith into action which then leads to the manifestation of the fullness of God's covenant promises in and upon our lives. I want you to go to the book of Joshua chapter 1 with me. And we're going to read just some of the verses. We're going to start quickly just from verse 2. In verse 2, God introduces, in essence, this conversation by making this statement to Joshua, saying to him that Moses, my servant is dead. Joshua faithfully served Moses quietly in the background for 40 years. It's interesting that when you actually then go and you read the account of where the Israelites traveled out of Egypt and spent the time, the 40 years in the wilderness, you actually begin to see how many times Joshua is actually mentioned in that account. You actually find that wherever you find Moses, you find Joshua in very, very close proximity. What is the lesson for us this day? In other words, what I'm saying to you is let God promote you. Psalm 75 verse 6 to 7 in the Passion Translation says this, This I know, the favor that brings promotion and power that doesn't come from anywhere on earth. For no one exalts a person but God, the true judge of all. He alone determines where favor rests. He anoints one for greatness. You see, He is the only one that brings blessings and increase. No man can bless you the way that God can bless you. On the one hand, we have time. On the other, we have what is referred to as a season. Time is for preparation and season for manifestation. Forty years Joshua served in the background, faithfully serving in the background for 40 years. Many times we get upset when the promotion does not come within the first six months. We get upset. We even go so far to get offended when the promotion does not come within the three years. Yet Joshua served faithfully, quietly in the background for 40 years. The 40 years, in essence, becomes what is referred to as chronos time. Time being a time then for preparation. You see, God was quietly forming him, developing him. He had to develop his gift and his skill set for the task at hand. That time was for preparation. But now God speaks to him in Joshua chapter 1 saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. In other words, the baton has been passed on from the previous generation to the next generation. And it is now in this place where he is about to step out of time and step into his season. Pastor Nicky van der Westen once said this, He said that when your season comes, demand comes. In other words, when your season comes, there is a demand that is placed upon you. And so it is that Joshua served faithfully in the background for 40 years. But he is now ready to make the transition from time into season. From preparation to manifestation. And I see that this is exactly what is busy happening in the world right now. This is exactly where we're at. Because this brings me to the latter part of verse 2, which says, Arise, go over this Jordan. Arise, go over that which separates, says the Spirit of the Lord. Many times what we look at, thinking that it is a natural barrier, is in fact a spiritual barrier. 
Because they came from a place where they had to prepare. Time, prepare. But now they were about to arise and cross over the Jordan River. Yes, it is a natural barrier. But it has a very deep and profound spiritual significance. I've been looking at what's been happening during this lockdown. In other parts of the world, they call it the quarantine. Nonetheless, this has been a time where churches have been locked down, ministries have been locked down, people's way of life has been limited, greatly impacted in so many ways. But what the Lord was showing me is that there were people who took this time of the lockdown secretly in the background, preparing for what's about to come, for what's about to come to the body of Christ. There's even ministers watching right now, pastors, great men and women of God watching right now. Although there have been others who simply been trying to survive the conditions of the lockdown and the quarantine, you have taken this time to prepare, knowing that God will speak to you telling you to arise from this situation under which circumstances have kept you. That you are waiting the voice of the Lord as He decrees and declares upon you even now. Arise and shine. It is time for you to be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. As the glory of the Lord rises upon you, He rises upon all that you do, your circle of influence, the territory He has given you, the land He has given you, the influence He has given you. It is time for you to rise to a new life. For you have been developing your skill set, developing the gift that God has entrusted to you. Businessmen, businesswomen, I also see many individuals in all seven spheres of society, whether it is sport, whether it is government, whether it is business, school, media, arts and entertainment. God has been preparing you for a time and a place such as this. You have been preparing in the background, whilst others have been running around scared, fearful, allowing fear to grip their hearts, not being able to see what God has, what anyone has for that matter, not knowing what's about to happen next. They've allowed fear to dictate their next move, but not you, not you, because you have kept your eyes fixed on Jesus the author and the perfecter of your faith. And you have said, I'm not going to simply survive during this season. But with the grace of God and the favor of God that's upon my life, I will thrive. I will come through on the other side victorious, knowing that God has made a way. The book of Samuel chapter 2 reveals that God is able to take someone from the ashes and elevate that person into the palace of the king. And so it is that God is going to take people, those whom everyone overlooked. The face of God has stood still upon you and God will promote you. God will release his favor upon you. And even though you have, may have been despised, even though you may have been overlooked for two years, five years, ten years, There is divine acceleration coming to you because you took this time to prepare. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus that your season has come. Arise, get up, get ready, for God is about to use you in a powerful, mighty way in the name of Jesus. If that is you in the comment section below, I'm wanting you to write down, that is me. I receive it. I appropriate it in Jesus' name. Verse 2 says, Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, 
you and all this people to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. You see, the season will not only set you up to fulfill your destiny, but that of future generations. The Bible declares that God is a generational God. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Galatians 3, 7 to 9 says, Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I declare that generational poverty will become generational prosperity. Wealth that cannot be spent in three lifetimes. In the name of Jesus, receive it now. Many might say, well, how is this going to happen? How? It's one thing to decree a thing, but how? It is simply through obedience. And remember, my definition of obedience is faith in action. Responding to the call by faith. That is what obedience is. You break the spirit of poverty by being faithful with your tithe and generous in your giving. This is how you break the back of the spirit of poverty. This is how you get rid and remove once and for all the spirit of poverty from your house. It's by being faithful with your tithe and generous in your giving. You see, when you are a tither, we have access to what is referred to as tither's rights. Now remember, you tithe to your local church, your storehouse, the place that spiritually feeds you. So all the tithers, listen up. Number one, the first tither's right. Number one is provision. In Malachi chapter 3, God says this. He says, test me now in this. If I will not open up the windows of heaven, the floodgates of heaven, and pour you out such a blessing that you will not have room enough to store it. That speaks of provision. Provision that God releases because of your position in covenant with God. But it's only available to those who are in covenant with God. To those who say, I will not only hear things that God says about the covenant. I will position myself accordingly so that I can enjoy the fullness of God's covenant promises in and upon my life. Number two is protection because it goes on to say in Malachi chapter 3 that the devourer is rebuked. In other words, no wicked thing will be able to touch you. The Bible says in Psalm 91, though a thousand fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, it will not come near you. You will not suffer loss. You will only experience increase and multiplication because that is your portion as you remain in covenant with Him. Number three is promotion. Promotion. The Bible ends off in Malachi chapter 3 to say this. It says, the world will once again see the difference between those who serve God and those who do not. In other words, the blessing favor of God is visible tangible upon your life, that even your enemies, even the world will look at you and say there's something different about you. Isn't it interesting that we have the Jewish people all around the world where people still look upon them and say that they are blessed? And I want you to understand that the book of Galatians chapter 3 says that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. We have been grafted in. Why? Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus Christ and what He has done. He has done great things. And so many people, unfortunately, make this mistake to go and simply read the Bible from a historic point of view and say, well, yeah, there's no denying that the Israelites were blessed, that even during a time in the wilderness, where you would not expect it to go well with people. The Bible says that as they left Egypt, there was no feeble among them. In other words, they were not those who were sluggish, those who could hardly move, 
those who had torn muscles, those who were so sick they could hardly move, they had to camp in a special hospital tent in the wilderness. The Bible says that there was no feeble among them. In a time when they needed water, Moses was simply instructed to speak to the rock, and then out of the rock flowed water, nourishing every single one, giving every single one something to drink. At another time, they were crying out in the desert for true nourishment, sustenance. And what happened was is that manna and quail was delivered by God Himself to His people. If God could keep what the Bible refers to as a stiff-necked people, in the Old Testament, under an old covenant, if He could keep them amidst all the things they said, amidst all the things they did, how much more will He not come who has established for us a better covenant based on better promises. It is time that we truly awaken to the reality of the new covenant. In a moment, we're going to have an opportunity to go to the Lord's table together, partake of the bread and partake of the cup, which Jesus did say is the new covenant in my blood. But today, I want us to have a revelation that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But also that faith comes by hearing the covenant of God. In other words, that divine health is your portion. Living in prosperity and abundance is your portion in Jesus Christ. But there are those watching right now, and you've never given your life to Jesus ever before. This is your moment. The Bible says that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Will you now not make this decision voluntarily and say, I will bow my knee and publicly confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've given your life to Jesus before, but you know what? Even now, during this time of worship, the Spirit of the Lord just once again touched you. And you were reminded of back then when you did serve Him. But you know deep down inside, you're not there where you're supposed to be. Your life is not speaking of the fullness of God's covenant promises. You can come back to Him right here, right now, by simply praying this prayer and believing it with your heart. So are you ready? Let's pray this prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I, confess I confess that I've sinned against you. So I ask that you will forgive me of all of my sin. Right here and right now, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I receive His forgiveness. Will you come and touch me? Change me. Set me free. Fill me. And let me never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you've just prayed that prayer, I want you quickly, the details are right there on the screen. Reach out to us, phone us, email us. Otherwise, also there in the comment section, I want you to know, I want you to say it out loud. I want you to write it out right there in the comment section on Facebook. I just prayed that prayer. And Facebook ambassadors, I want you to love upon every single one of them who have just given their lives to the Lord, who have just recommitted their lives to Jesus Christ. So come on right there where you are. Let's worship Him as we approach the Lord's table. Let your name be lifted up and glorified. Let the earth tremble at your name. Let your name be lifted up and glorified.
out to each one that has prayed this prayer. Maybe it was a first time commitment or even a second time commitment. It is probably the biggest and most exciting thing that you could do in your life. So congratulations and welcome to the kingdom of God. Your life has only just started. It hasn't ended. And I want to encourage you, get into the Bible. Spend time with Him and you will grow in fullness to everything that God has for you. So welcome and such an exciting moment in your life. Grab your Bible, even write down the date today that you've given your life to Jesus Christ. And remind the people around you, you are now born again and you're walking in the victory that God has for you. If you have your Bibles, would you join me in Corinthians, first book of Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 onwards, as we prepare for the Lord's table. Yes, you've guessed it. It's one of the scriptures that often gets used. But it's very interesting because Paul writes here and he says, what I have received of the Lord, I give unto you. In other words, he was not there. Remember, he was designated, he was released to be an apostle but he was not a disciple with Jesus Christ. So he wasn't there when the Passover took place. So he writes from what he now understands, the revelation that he's got, and he gives us to us in the following manner. He says in verse 24, And when Jesus had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is a token is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he says, in the same manner, he took the cup and he said this, this cup is the new covenant that I'm making with you in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Watch, Paul starts off by saying, when Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks. I'm not sure what he gave thanks for, but I do know he gave thanks because of the life he's had, the 23, 33 odd years that he's had. And he gave thanks for the future because about that same time, he was about to make covenant with us in a brand new way through him giving his life on the cross. And so when we celebrate, when we get together, it's about giving thanks. Firstly, and then everything else falls in place. So would you just take a few seconds? I'm not going to pray in front. I'm going to give you a moment and each one of us here on the stage, just a moment to give thanks. Thank you for his life. Thank you for the freedom, the breakthrough, whatever it is. But give thanks. Change your altitude to the breakthrough that God has for you by just taking a moment. Let's give thanks. Mm. Lord, we come before you with thankfulness. Thankful that you persevered at the Passover to become the lamb slain so that we can have that freedom. I thank you for everything that was entailed, encompassed in the cross, forgiveness of sin, breakthrough, our healing, health, poverty, all of those things you took to the cross, oppression, anything that we can imagine so that we can have the freedom. So we give you thanks. We give you praise for what you did. Lord, your word says as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance of you. Not of events, but of you. So as we partake, Lord, we are reminded of you. What a great and awesome God you are. There is none that compares to you. There's no one equal to you. There's no one that can even stand in your presence and can say the stuff that you've done. Like you refer to in Job, to Job himself saying, no one keeps the seas at bound like you do. No one names the stars and know which ones are born and changes like you do. Yet you're mindful of us and we are so thankful. So Lord, even as we partake of the bread, I thank you for that freedom in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You might partake. The word also declares at this very moment that he took the cup. This cup, he says, is the what? The covenant, exactly what Pastor Kevin was talking about. Covenant in his blood. This is the start of the new. And so, Lord, we come before you again in thankfulness. 
thankful that we are in a new covenant with you. Thank you that everything is completed. And like Pastor Jade said in offering, it's now our time to step into the covenant and to do our part. And by partaking, we are thankful for what you've done and we commit ourselves to doing everything that you've called us to do so that we can grow in the fullness in Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen. You may partake. What a privilege to be able to celebrate his death together. I trust you had a really great time. And I want to encourage you, get into the Word of God. Grow in everything that He has. Remember, covenant is two ways. He's done His part. We've got to now do our part. We've got to speak it. We've got to believe it. And we've got to act upon it. And you'll see the breakthrough that God has for you. Amen. Pastor Kevin. Amen. You know what, Pastor Ron, that is just such a powerful, powerful message. And I want to encourage you to get into the Word of the Lord. Because that is exactly the instruction that God had given Joshua by saying to him that, yes, you need to be strong and very courageous. But saying to him that if he was going to meditate upon the Word day and night, the book of the law, which is the first five books of the Bible, which deals with the covenant and the covenant promises of God. So I want to encourage you to get into the Word of God. I want you to highlight the promises of God, the covenant promises of God. And we want to stand in agreement with you this week that you will experience the fullness of God's covenant promises in and through your life. Remember, right after this, you can catch Pastor Andre and Jenny on Faith Matters as they come to you for the next half an hour. Also remember, you can catch them live every single weeknight on Faith Today, 6 to 8 p.m. Central Africa time. And then also remember, one uh, you can also go back to the uh, Facebook page of My Faith TV. Simply go to myfaith.tv. You can share this broadcast even now after the fact with your friends and family. So go and share this feed, tag your friends and family, and be a blessing to them. We'll see you again live with us next week Sunday at 9 a.m. as we come to you again for a powerful time in the presence of God. God bless you. Shalom. Have a wonderful day.